All right, today we're wiring up the BDL-168, and what they recommend is stranded 18-gauge wire for the pin connectors that are going to go to the component. We went ahead and used solid core wire because we were having trouble getting either one to fit in there, and what Doug just did is flatten it out a little bit, because if you take a close look at the pin connectors, those rectangular uh, holes that they have on there are just a little too small to fit either one through. So that's how we found a way to uh, get past that. And then what he's going to do is go ahead and you solder both ends to it. And this is what you do for all the pins except for 11, which I believe is the ground. And you just do number 11. You don't do the M below it. I think it's M. And on number 12, you do a positive and negative from your power supply which you can use the Digitrax one like we have right here or any similar one that has to be rated to the right voltage which you'll find in the uh, manual and we'll pick back up when we go to put the BDL-168 on the on the component board so we have our BDL-168 installed now with the PR3 for the computer interface and I'll take you down there and take a closer look at that in just a second we did that so that we have sensor outputs with the train controller software which I have not mastered yet but I'll try to show you a small demonstration real quick. I'm going to go ahead with the auto train and try to pull locomotive 1520 from the block it's in to the next one and with any luck it will actually cooperate here. So as you can see 1520 is moving back there from the first block that I have hooked up and it should cross the bridge and stop shortly after that. As I was saying, I haven't completely mastered the software and I'm not going to blame the software, it's me not wanting to read the manual right yet. So, And she should be entering the new block anytime now. Actually, she is in the new block now, so we'll see when it decides to stop the train. And there she is, and you can see that it shows Mopac 1520 is now occupying block 2. It is still hanging back into the last block 2, and it may be reading a little bit off the metal wheels. I don't remember if that caboose has got a resistor in it or not. Now I'm going to take you down to show you how we wired it all up. Right, so I'm down here on our component board that we've kind of put together. That is the PR3. That is actually what Digitrax has to communicate between LocoNet and the computer. Pretty straightforward system to set up. Their instructions are actually pretty easy to follow on that. This is the BDL-168. Now, you see that green LED flashing there, and then you see the Loco connect, connect, LocoNet connection right there. Um, to program this board, it comes at address 1. What you want to do is press the switch located right here above the green LED. It'll blink a couple of times. You go to your system. Um, I have the DCS50 right now, the Zephyr. You press switch. You press the address number that you want. In this case, we chose 5. And you press the C button, and it's done. You're going to want that because Train Controller or any other software is going to want to know what the address is for this component. Now, what we have are power connections, AC power connection that you have to wire up and the documentation will tell you which one that is and you also have a ground. From there you have sub power districts where the first component that you'll see, the first pin there, that goes into the common and there are four of those because it's 16 detection zones and there's four sub zones so you have four of those sub zone wires that actually go together and then we run them back to the DCS50 and then from there, even though the only reason we staggered colors on here was just to be able to keep track one from the next, um, but we have our zones, our detection zones, blocked out here. And I went through to the other side, and from there we go out to the various power leads. Now a certain detection block might have three leads, and you just wire those together, and we've wired them back, and I've had absolutely no trouble with that. Um, other than that, you know, we will come back and solder these at some point. Doug does that. I don't. So that's what's going on with the wire nuts. Example of sensor 6, which actually I think had three different power leads into that section of track. What I've done 
is actually follow that wire goes right to the track and this wire right here goes back to the control board the BDL 168 this wire right here goes to the next detection zone which we've wired all the way through there and it just piggybacks through and I found that that's the easiest way to save a lot of wire since it is expensive and speaking of wire we used 18 gauge wire to do this and it's worked out pretty well and just to finish it up here's an example of where we have gone ahead and isolated the rail now each section does need to be isolated this isn't finished we just rough that in so we could get this done last night and then you can see over here we did the same thing on this section so that's that common rail uh, we use the red wire that went to all of our leads just as long as you keep it the same you don't want to short and that pretty much sums up how we've done block control and occupancy detection with the BDL 168 and I will get back to you just as soon as I figure out how all the software works and does all the great things it wants to do